motorcycles, airplanes, and rock and roll. Not exactly a blend of dreams or careers, but it may define Ron Heron. Born Ronald Leroy Heron in April of 1949 in Little Rock to Alf and Olita Heron. Ron had two younger brothers, Steve and Tom, and a younger sister, Anita. At age five, the Herons bought a 163-acre farm at Mayflower. The young Heron developed an interest in airplanes when his Uncle Tom would bring balsa wood models when visiting. Ron built so many model airplanes that his parents built a special shelf for them in the home. Ron was also an avid fan of the TV series Sky King, a series about a flying cowboy. The family would often go to Adams Field to watch airplanes land. Ron graduated high school at Mayflower in 1967 and got a scholarship to Arkansas State Teachers College in Conway, what is now UCA. In high school and in college, Ron and some friends started a rock and roll band. The Beatles, the British rock invasion, and the Motown sound was the rage for most teenagers from that time. Ron married the first time in 1972 to a girl he met in college, and soon the band got a good enough job to play the nightclubs and made a meager living with a contract at a local hotel, the Camelot Inn. Playing music six nights a week gave Ron the chance to save a little money, and with it, he bought and built a Benson gyrocopter from a kit, taught himself to fly by having his wife tow it behind a truck, as he describes it, sort of like water skiing in the air. Reading from the kit's instruction book, he soon learned to fly without the tow, free flight. By the mid-70s, Ron decided the rock and roll life was too much, and his desire to work on airplanes was too great. Ron felt a little shy with his love of gyrocopters at first. He felt a little like an outsider or maybe the village idiot. In my early learning phases, I once flew through the top of a tree. <laughs> I was a, so I saw this dust devil coming as I was flying the gyrocopter across. And the manual told me not to go to, too high yet because your, your depth perception gets bad. So. I was flying low. Well, I see this dust devil coming across. I know this is going to be bad. I don't want to run through that thing. And I wasn't paying attention to where I was going. I literally flew through the top of the tree, took branches out of it, ended up landing in the soybean field with branches hanging on the, the landing gear. So that was pretty uh, interesting. Ron got a job at the North Little Rock Airport where he would fly his gyrocopter. He pumped gas, swept floors, and cleaned toilets. As he put it, not as glamorous as playing in the band, but a chance to pursue aviation full-time. Ron worked his way up from gas boy to mechanics assistant in the maintenance shop and learned all he could from the mechanics and pilots there. At this point, Ron bought an old 1943 Taylor Craft L2M which he rode to and from his folks cow pasture airstrip, jokingly dubbed Lolly International. It was a 20 mile flight to the North Little Rock Airport and he did it every workday when it wasn't zero visibility or storming. By the mid 1980s, Heron still worked at the airport and earned his FAA licenses and ratings, including airframe, power plant, inspection authorization, and private pilot certificates for fixed wing and rotocraft gyroplane. Later, Heron would become an FAA designee for testing aircraft mechanics and issuing their FAA certificates for airframe power craft. In 1982, the Herons were the parents of a son. They called him Matthew. But the marriage dissolved in a few years, and Ron decided to open his own small company, a little distance from the ex-wife and his old job. He opened Little Wing Aviation and performed aircraft maintenance, repairs, and inspections, as well as testing A&P applicants. In a few years, Ron met Chris, a local CPA who had a pilot's license and wanted to buy a used Aronka Champ, which she brought to Ron for inspection. It seems both the airplane and Chris passed inspection, and Ron was no longer single. About this time, Ron embarked on a plan to develop his own rotocraft design. The old Benson gyrocopter had its flaws, and Ron felt the whole idea could be made better and safer and more fun. He completely redesigned the concept, moving the motor to the front and making the rotocraft more of a sports aircraft that was operator friendly and much safer. Ron borrowed a Piper Cub fuselage from Zane Anderson, a friend and mentor, and set out to design his new rotocraft. Despite some mishaps and his feeling that he was once again the village idiot, 
his design worked. He soon began to show his new rotorcraft called the Little Wing Autogyro at air shows and won numerous awards and had his new design featured in national and international flying publications. The planes were featured in EAA Sports Aviation, Sport Pilot, Rotocraft Magazine, and the cover of trade plane Heron drew up construction drawing sets using his skill from basic drafting he had learned in college that allowed for home builders to build their own little wing autogyros. And to date, well over 1,000 plans have been sold, and Ron has built several turnkey models and some have shipped overseas. The most widely known little wing autogyro built was the one for renowned skydiving author and photographer Andrew Keach in which Keach flew to acquire some 31 official national and world-class records, including the world altitude record for auto gyros at 26,408 feet. This one, nicknamed Woodstock, is now prominently displayed in the EAA Museum in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. In 1997, Ron went to work as the aviation maintenance instructor at Pulaski Technical College's Aviation Technology School, where he retired in 2012. And about those motorcycles, he has a collection of antique motorcycles which he considers the next best thing to flying. Ron and his wife Chris still love the adventure of flying, and he still works and tinkers on aircraft and motorcycles and antique cars and yes he still finds time to pick a tune or two on one of his guitars a man of many talents who had a dream of aviation he shared this dream and made it reality ron's accomplishments and pioneer spirit have earned him a place in the arkansas aviation hall of fame